My testimony draws on 15 years as director of the Juvenile Rights Advocacy Project at Boston College Law School, as well as 10 years providing research and technical assistance to Annie E. Casey Foundation Juvenile Detention Alternatives Initiative jurisdictions around the country on ways to reduce the inappropriate detention of girls and increase their success in communities. Over the last two decades, girls remain a numerical minority in the juvenile justice system, but their proportion has steadily increased. Girls are 30% of juvenile arrests, 18% of detentions, and 13% of commitments. Girls' presence in the justice system is closely linked to developmental and social factors unique to girls in either kind or degree, and increasing evidence shows that unintended consequences of juvenile justice system policies and practices are pulling girls into the system and keeping them there when another system or community-based agency would better serve them. The impact of family chaos and trauma for girls in the juvenile justice system cannot be overstated. While boys and girls in the justice system likely come from distressed families, girls are more likely to have families characterized by chaos such as violence, incarceration of a parent, and residential instability. Research shows that girls are being criminalized for living in these chaotic households by being arrested for family-based assaults in situations that would have triggered family services intervention in a prior decade and by being detained for violating curfew and orders to follow rules of the house in status offense cases. JDAI, now in over 100 jurisdictions nationwide, is a 15-year effort to reduce the inappropriate detention of youth and shore up communities to help youth live successfully in their homes. Through JDAI, I see a constant link between family chaos and girls' detention. For example, in 2006, Nevada law required that anyone arrested for domestic battery be securely detained for a minimum of 12 hours, making no distinction for the age of the offender. Under this law, police called about fights between a mother and daughter were much more likely to arrest the teenage daughter, leaving the mother to care for other children in the home and triggering mandatory detention of the girl, which typically stretched beyond 12 hours. As a result, detention data from Washaw and Clark counties showed that girls who were about 25% of detentions overall were an average of 42% of detentions for domestic battery. Recently, Nevada amended its law to prohibit detention for domestic battery alone and put family crisis services in place as an alternative so the girls are now provided with family services rather than being detained as victims of family chaos. Similar laws and policies exist around the country and have a disproportionate impact on girls who experience family violence at high rates. Research shows that up to 73% of girls in the justice system has exp have experienced sexual or physical victimization. Girls are more likely than boys to have experienced sexual assault, rape or sexual harassment, and abuse histories in girls may be linked to mental health issues such as depression and anxiety disorders. Girls who have experienced sexual abuse are likely to engage in risky sexual behaviors themselves, risking their health and often triggering involvement in the juvenile justice system. Girls with histories of sexual victimization are more likely to become commercially sexually exploited, leading to arrests and detention for prostitution-related offenses and to lives marked by more abuse and trauma. Victimization and trauma lead girls to run away from home, which is a frequent cause of their arrest. Girls' profound histories of victimization become pathways into the juvenile justice system in these numerous ways, but using detention and incarceration punishes and re-victimizes these girls and fails to provide states and localities with incentive to properly address girls' victimization in the public health, child and family services, and victim services systems. As a January 2010 report by the U.S. Department of Justice made clear, sexual victimization is occurring at alarmingly high levels in juvenile facilities across the country. Because girls' offending is often tied to chaotic families, victimization, and mental health needs, girls in the juvenile justice system are typically involved with multiple systems. Girls I represent have contact with the child welfare system as a status offender or abused child, the juvenile justice system, the education system, often as a special education student, the public health system, and the mental health system. In these cases, wraparound services are critical, and states should be encouraged to find ways to work across traditional agency boundaries. Although there are clear national patterns among girls in the juvenile justice system, the precise nature and mix of practices and programs needed to address challenges posed by girls will vary locally. Without data which is disaggregated by gender and cross-referenced by race and ethnicity, we cannot fully understand the challenges facing girls and which policies will be effective. In every jurisdiction I have worked with, detailed data collection and analysis disaggregated by gender and cross-referenced by race and ethnicity has been the key to understanding and designing effective solutions for girls. 
let me make four recommendations. Um, to better understand and respond to the challenges posed by girls in the juvenile justice system, I recommend requiring jurisdictions to collect and analyze juvenile justice system data disaggregated by gender and cross-referenced by race and ethnicity, eliminating the valid court order exception to the deinstitutionalization of status offender mandate to prevent criminalization as well as provide incentives for jurisdictions to develop appropriate programming and services. Encouraging the use of community-based wraparound services coordinated across agencies for girls with high social service and mental health needs rather than using detention. And additional research on girls and the system practices affecting them, particularly on the prevalence and needs of pregnant and parenting girls in the juvenile justice system and alternatives to juvenile justice involvement for commercially sexually exploited girls. Thank you.